So this is an exciting time, because we took a trip to Brooklyn, New York, to Tarform electric motorcycles with Taurus. And we're gonna see exactly what he does in his shop. Taurus. What's up, Greg? Hey, brother. How are you, man? Thanks for having me, man. Welcome. Let's check this place out. Yes, please, after you. Welcome to the Tarform studio. What an amazing view you have of New York City, my God. The ever-expanding Manhattan skyline, yes. So beautiful. I see bikes, I this see computers, is... I see parts. Yeah, that's where we build them. This is, uh, this is where sort it happens, of the right? build space. Yeah, okay. that's uh, one bike being in the process. This one complete bike. Wow, beautiful. That's where all the hands-off engineering okay. and design and the powertrain tests and so on, parts rack. but. Here's a concept to show how do you build vehicles in a city. The cool part is you ha it looks like you have all of the tenants of design and build in one it's space. Same, under one roof, yes. Right. Is this, Literally. Is, this, is this where you thought you would be in four to five years? Is this it? Um, as a sort of diffuse vision, yes. But okay. maybe not uh, specifically in this angle. But uh, you know, moving from a, from a ground space uh, higher up, is, uh, that was wow. the ambition from day one. Yeah. OK, Tar, so tell me what we have here. Because this thing, the profile of this bike is unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Absolutely. Sincerely, beautiful bike. No, that was a part of the, I think the first line of this bike was the silhouette. Okay. So th that's, uh, that's how I started designing it. Because I think there's something primal about motorbikes. I absolutely agree. You know, and maybe it's some sort of old remnant from when we we're seeing the silhouette of a cheetah in the, in the you know, or, or the African hounds, savanna. All, 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 all those animalistic kind of things, right? So like, I wanted to capture that essence. Gotcha. And how do you design a machine with the fewest uh, amount of lines? Okay. So the silhouette is like, that, that's, that's what this bike is about, you know? And then sort of giving it shape and uh, translating it, and at the same time trying to capture the essence of a motorbike, right. but also bring in all the latest tech. Uh, so you. making it electric was a no-brainer. So when I saw this bike and I saw, I, I saw you online, I saw what your, your product offering was, there's a lot of things that I see as a guy who is a, a guy into architecture, into art, into modern art, into classic art, motorcycles and the, and the whole thing. Mm. This has so many, so many checking, so many boxes of what a beautiful design experience is because I see things look like it almost flows through water and then the, 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 the profile is so beautiful. So what, what inspired you besides what, what you mentioned mm. to make everything part of the design experience? Yeah, no, thank you for mentioning that. No. And that was, uh, um, I think it's, the bike was kind of an, the ultimate object to give, uh, give shape to. Okay. And uh, uh, I spent all my, all my career in, in multiple fields of design, everything from uh, product design, furniture, started building vintage bikes. Uh, grew up in Scandinavia, which is heavily influenced by minimalism and working yeah. with natural, natural materials and a lot of sort of, you know, stripping away everything that's not essential. So that, that's, that was kind of ingrained in the way I perceived what a beautiful object was. Right. And I wanted to put that into, into a bike. And it right. started with, for me, it was not about just designing one part, but how do you give attention to the foot peg, the handlebars, so it can stand alone as its own uh, art piece, right. but still be part of everything else. Right. So I think there's not a lot of parts on this bike that well, except some uh, like brake, uh, you know, where we don't really have much control, but everything else was supposed to come together into sort of one sculptural piece and not just be random collection of parts. When I look at the profile and what you use, I can't associate any other company with these little things. So that tells me that everything is custom. Mm. It's all thought out and it fits the look that you perceive before you, mm. like you said, you didn't go to a factory and say, I, where, do, where a normal company goes to get their parts, other yeah. than brakes and things like yes. that. Yeah. Yes, yes. And cool. typically, you know, it's designed by committee. You have so many okay. people involved right. that one guy is sitting isolated, designing one part, and then they come together and like you see that the aesthetics are not coherent, that right. it was different departments. And you know, the advantage of being small is that we all did this in-house. What do you see your customer possibly adopting your bikes from? 
what we've noticed is that a lot of people come from the from the tech, the media, the creative sort of design space. Style. Uh, exactly, who were typically not into bikes. Right. And uh, I've had multiple conversations with people who say, you know what, I never cared about motorcycles, but now I want to get into the space. Who are some mm. of your design kings that you think about, mm. the way they design? Well, there's multiple. I think most of them um, would come from furniture okay. and uh, architecture. So um, Hans Wagner is uh, okay. one of my uh, favorite furniture designers. Okay. Um, uh, Charles Eames, of okay. course, you know. Um, the Bauhaus movement in the 20s. So it was an interesting transition of making something simple, uh, optimizing it for you know a larger sort of production, but not making it just a standard cube. When I look at this, I see, I feel like it's, you know, your roots of Scandinavia, I see German, I see mm. the Art Deco style. And all of that is inspired by nature. So, right. you know, our, why are right angles in nature? Exactly. Why is our office filled with plants? Because the same line that you see in that plant is the same line that goes here. Ah, so how very, do you take cool. that and bring it into something that's typically perceived as a cold machine world? And I think that or, you know, there's no there's no straight line or an angle in this bike. Everything yes. is a curve that merges into the other one. And right. this is how nature operates. So tell me some more yeah. about how you design the gas tank, because that is beautiful. Um, that was a big challenge because electrical motorbikes don't need a gas tank. There, there's, sure. you know, but you still need a volume because right. everything that's behind it is a big battery pack. You have the motor, you have the motor controller. Um, the your, challenge. That's your center too in a normal bike. That's your weight. You know what I mean? Exactly. So you need to you need to uh, put some sort of shape to it and. Okay. Uh, uh, the idea was how do we do something that's familiar okay. yet different because if you if you design something that is a new piece of tech the idea is that how do you design this bike in a modular way where you can change the bodywork and the panels and essentially give a complete new look to the bike right. which you can't really do on any other vehicles because it's too costly and they're not designed with the modularity thinking from the ground up right so it was basically like okay let's let's sort of give it a shape of what a classic gas tank would look like, but it's not a gas tank. It's just a shape that gives dimension to the bike. Right. That you can also, in the future, uh, keep evolving, you know? Right. So if this style becomes outdated in 10 years, great. We'll send a new uh, design pack and then you can sort of upgrade the look of the bike. This is hand-shaped uh, using mid-century techniques of uh, basically skinning aluminum on top of a wooden buck and okay. then hand welding, so it takes a, a long time for for an artist to build this and uh, that's sort of our homage to you know the, the craftsmanship approach gotcha. to it um, at the same time weaving in all the future tech that it has there is no gearbox it's okay. direct drive you have one moving shaft directly translates to the rear sprocket so you okay. just twist the throttle it, it goes instant takeoff what is the tour how, how fast can the tank go how quickly can it get out there um zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds Wow. Um, which is, again, you know, you just, the seamless delivery of power from the moment you twist the throttle and then suddenly I'm doing 70 miles per hour. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience. You can't compare it to, you know, an internal combustion bike. Uh, top speed, 120 miles an hour, which is personally on two wheels, eh, you know, how often would you be going 120 miles an hour? When I test drove an electric bike uh, years ago, I, I remember feeling this, wow, it's amazing how quickly the power delivery is, but I don't, I don't have any association to the speed because I don't hear it. And we're used to hear the revving of the engine, it's, it, sure, some indication, shaking, something that's exactly, happening, right? that we're, that we're going it. fast, you know. So I felt, okay, how can we add sound into an electric bike to, to give more depth to that experience? Gotcha and at the same time provide more safety. Because if you're right in New York City on something that goes fast and quiet, you're people don't see crazy. you, you know, they just walk out. Sure. Um, so it took us a while to kind of figure out, well, how do we give sound to, to something that's quiet? And essentially came up with a solution where we extract the natural hum of the electric motor okay. and amplify it. So uh, as, as the bike goes, you hear the motor except louder. So very okay. similar to how an electric guitar works. 
you have an amplifier that amplifies what, what you're actually sure. playing. So it's not a digital sound, it's, uh, it is what the bike makes, right. except you know, fine-tuned. And if you're, if you're nail if you get out on the highway and you're nailing, it's gonna be louder, and, right? It's gonna give you yes, more aggression, yes. right? Yes, And uh, the sound is mapped to the riding mode. So as you switch riding modes, the sound note changes a little Could bit as well. Can we hear that well. real quick? Is it? Yeah, I'll, I'll rev it. see any cords coming out so tell me how this thing plugs in to get power you plug it in regular household outlet and uh, four hours you get a full charge or a level two charger like you typically see in uh, car chargers okay and uh, you know most people charge their vehicles at home so we okay. wanted to make it as widely accessible as possible that you can yes. roll it anywhere find a plug and uh, and recharge it so I literally if I was to buy one and I had a house in San Francisco a small row home I could put it in there, regular outlet, I don't have to install a new outlet, yeah. I can plug it in, go and go to sleep in four hours of charge. Yeah, just like you Every charge your phone. Every single night, I have a fully powered bike when I get up in the morning. Yes. So Taurus, the name Tarform is original and different. Where did you come up with that and how did it, how did it come to you? In Swedish, it means um, something that takes shapes. Okay. That's something that evolves, which is one of the cornerstones of what we do. That it's, it's in a state of constant sort of progression. When you talk about building a motorcycle company in Brooklyn, New York, why, why America? Hmm. Um, I moved to the States from Sweden about 10 years ago okay. and uh, joined this local motorcycle shop in Park Slope. So it was a community with uh, probably 100 people working on different bikes, everything from you know, the vintage uh, Honda guys to the super sport bikes and spent a lot of evenings there. Okay. And uh, my girlfriend was like, what the hell are you doing there? You know, and I was building custom bikes and was more and more sort of fascinated by the, this, this object that not, not only uh, gives you an experience, but it also brings so many people together. You know, they all come together around this machine. Right. And um, um, so that was, that was kind of part of, of the thing I didn't really experience in Sweden before. Um, and then I spent the... Uh, Monday to Friday is in, in the tech world and the design, and uh, uh, ultimately five years ago decided, well, I don't want to keep doing technology and I don't want to build custom bikes. Is there a way to combine both of them, wow. but okay. do it at a bigger scale that has a bigger impact in terms of sustainability, electrification, and also just build a new brand that that's, uh, stands for something, you know, right. and uh, makes, us, makes a claim that we have to move away from toxic materials. We have to move away from outdated manufacturing processes. And, uh, you know, that, that idea sort of started to evolve. And uh, um, our small team at that point was said, well, can we do this in Brooklyn? You know, can we build a manufacturing company in, the, in New York State or New York right. City? Um, and what, is, what would be required for us to do that? So how do we build things more efficient and uh, that also enables startups to get to market faster, to build prototypes faster right. at lower cost without inv you know, investing billions of dollars into uh, gigafactories or sure. crazy tooling processes. So it was mainly, uh, that idea came from lack of resources. Right. So we said, well, let's- Low cost, high workflow, right? Yes, and everyone was based here. You know, I didn't want to move to like Detroit or anywhere else. Sure. Um, so that was kind of the, the origin. Typically what you see in the, in not just the vehicle industry, but in how we have structured our consumer society, is that we buy things, uh, it's, it, we live in a, in a buy and replace society. Right. Uh, if you look 50, 60 years ago, it was buy and repair. So you had people who came and repaired your refrigerator, sure. a guy who repaired your television. So the way products were built back then, uh, was mainly from, well, how do we build this so it lasts as long as possible for the consumer? Today, it's very different. Today, today products are built for obsolescence. Intentionally to fail. 
intentionally Eventually. to fail. You know, we buy a phone every year. Someone tells you, you got to buy a new one because there's a better one. So that fuels insane amount of waste, waste that doesn't have to be there. And uh, vehicles started, uh, that came into vehicle design uh, in the 30s or 40s, which was okay. basically, how do we engineer things to break? Right. You know, it's not a coincidence that your vehicle breaks after your warranty expires. Right. Uh, I don't think that's a sustainable way to keep producing things. And, uh, you know, if we are a physical manufacturer, someone who decides to bring a physical product to life, I don't think it's just a, it's not a nice thing to think about uh, what is an eco-friendly material. It, it's a must-have right. because our oceans are filled with plastics and there are mountains of, of waste. Right. So ha bringing awareness to th this typically unaddressed issue is a, is a big thing, you know, right. and uh, what can we do on our tiny scale to look at uh, what other alternatives are there to petroleum-based products? Can we avoid using injection molded plastics? Can we avoid using toxic paints and chemicals in the process? And uh, once we built the, started building the prototype, we saw that there's a lot of stuff out there available that's really cool, uh, but it's not being implemented into the industry. If we build vehicles to last, you only upgrade the things that have to be upgraded. So you sure. don't get that, you know, we're not gonna tell you in five years, you have to get a new tar form because the one you have is outdated. No, right. we're going to tell you, try this new body kit, you know, because we upgraded the design, but everything else should last. This is a beautiful space. It, it's what I would expect to see in a, in a design world. It just so happens that you make beautiful motorcycles. Oh, thank That's you. That's what's awesome. So thank you very much for showing me what you do, My pleasure. why you do it, and the bikes are beautiful. I learned exactly how they're designed and why they're relevant, but why they're going to be the bikes that really take us into the next century, which mm. is incredibly cool. Thank, Thank you, you Greg. very much for your time, brother. Yes, Appreciate next time it. we'll Thank go riding, uh, not just looking at them. I've looked enough, it's ready to time test these babies. Awesome, man. Thanks again. Man. Good, Appreciate my pleasure. It. Taurus and his team at Tarform are truly creating the motorcycles of tomorrow. They're full of style, sustainability, and are like no other motorcycle I've ever seen. This is Gregory Shelton with Historic Living Modern World reminding you, whenever you do something, always make sure you move people. Cheers.